Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, First Lady Margaret Kenyatta, um, Your Excellencies are the Deputy President and the Second Prime Minister of the Republic, my Lord Bishops, uh, colleague governors, family and friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, reading the eulogy for you is myself, Nerito Moridi, and uh, Ryan Moy. I am a grandson of His Excellency, the former president, or as he is more popularly known in the family, Big Moy. Um, Your Excellency, perhaps heeding the bishop's request and in honor of the departed president and the bishop did request that we should learn to say sorry more often may i just request please turn to the person sitting next to you and say sorry uh, your excellency your Excellency and the congregation, we thank you. So here it goes. Leo Tolstoy once said that there is no greatness where there is no simplicity, goodness, and truth. And here, therefore, is the life and times of His Excellency Mwai Kibaki, CGH, third president of Kenya. That Mwai Kibaki was a humble man who loved simplicity is well known. That he was a good and great man is an acknowledged fact. That he cherished truth and fairness is not in doubt. Mwai Kibaki recognized that serving others is life's greatest joy and its ultimate reward. To millions of Kenyans, he was the brightest of a thousand points of light. In him, Kenyans found reason to hope, the courage to dream, and a man to emulate. Mwai Kibaki's life is intertwined with, the history, uh, with our nation's history. But besides being a story of a commander-in-chief of great accomplishments, it is a story of a deeply devoted family man, a beloved son, a dear husband, a cherished father, and a grandfather a treasured brother, and a dutiful uncle and relative to many. Mwai Kibaki taught us that public service um, is noble and necessary. He showed us that one can serve with passion and utmost integrity. In fidelity to our shared humanity, he heeded the call to serve his country and never looked back earning the profound privilege uh, to serve as a teacher, lawmaker, cabinet minister, vice president, leader of the official opposition, and as president of the Republic of Kenya. He undertook his duties with a distinct sense of civility and dignity, and will undoubtedly inspire many in Kenya, East Africa, Africa, and beyond for years to come. Sunrise. Mwai Kibaki was born to Kibaki Gedenji and Teresia Wanjiko on the 15th of November 1931 in Dongori village in the present day Odaya sub county in Nyeri county. He was the last born in a family of six. His siblings are the late Wagui, the late Gedenji, the late Kenywa Waiderero, who is here with us today, the late Derito, and the late Waruguru. During his childhood, uh, a time when Kibaki and his age mates routinely engaged in tending goats and calves near home, a peculiar structure elected in the area caught his fancy. He was to learn later that the unusual edifice constructed by Catholic missionaries was a sanctuary come school. As fate would have it, young Kibaki ended up being part of the new world uh, that this new phenomenon uh, portended. He attended his preparatory school, 
dub sub A and sub B there. At first, his father was a little skeptical about young Kibaki's peculiar venture. However, Kibaki's enthusiasm to become part of the novel adventure was unstoppable. And so his long and illustrious academic enterprise started in earnest. After successfully completing his foundational schooling, Mwai Kibaki joined Gatuyaini Primary School where he spent two years. Back then, there was no telling where this journey would uh, land him. However, being the diligent and bright boy he was, his prospective fortunes were already ascertainable. As it came to pass, uh, Mwai Kibaki was destined for greatness. Those who knew Mwai Kibaki from his childhood days through his time at Makerere University speak of a man who, right from the start, knew what he wanted to become and the path he wanted to follow to achieve it. Nothing, it would seem, was coincidental or fortuitous about his life. Everything seemed aligned to purpose, uh, purposefulness. Kibaki later joined the Holy Ghost Catholic Missionaries Karima Mission School, which is today Karima Primary School, for another three years. From there, he went to Madari School, uh, later named Nyeri High School, before joining the Mangu High School, discovering Yonda. It was at Mangu High School that greatly transformed Kibaki's life. Started by Catholic priests, Mangu High School became the melting pot in which some of the best brains in the country uh, were chaperoned into greatness. The founders of Mangu High School were keen on establishing an institution firmly anchored in the Catholic faith and fully committed to the pursuit of academic excellence. After excelling at Mangu High School, Kibaki joined Makere University College in Uganda to pursue a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics, History, and Political Science. He emerged as one of the best students in the Faculty of Arts in 1955, attaining a first class honors degree. After graduation, Kibaki was employed at Shell Uganda as an assistant sales manager. He resigned when he secured a scholarship to study for a Bachelor of Science in Political Science in Public Finance, sorry. I repeat. He resigned when he secured a scholarship to study for a Bachelor of Science in Public Finance at the prestigious London School of Economics and Political Science, LSE. At LSE, Kibaki became the first African to graduate with a first class honors degree. Mwai Kibaki returned to Makerere as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Economics. The university would, years later, in 2012, bestow upon him an honorary Doctor of Laws degree as a testament to his distinguished and outstanding contribution to public service at the national, regional, regional and international levels. The tree and its branches. Just as a farmer plants a small seed which grows to become a large tree with branches that yield a bounty of fruits as well as providing a safe and secure shade, Mwai Kibaki settled back home when he met and wedded Lucy Mudoni in the year 1961. Their union bore them one daughter and three sons, Judy Wanjiko, Jimmy Kibaki, David Kagai, and Tony Gidenji. Today, the home is also filled with seven uh, grandchildren, being Joy Marie, Ryan Mwai, uh, Christina Mudoni, Giorgio Mwai, Jeremy Mwai, Anna Lisa Mudoni, and Leah Rose Mudoni. Political inclination. 
Makerere was where Mwai Kibaki launched his political career. He was elected chairman of the Kenya Students Association as well as vice chairman of Makerere Students Guild during a watershed moment marked by heightened political consciousness right across East Africa. This was a time when the agitation to end colonial domination in Africa was at its peak. Kibaki seized that moment and distinguished himself as a champion of emancipation of the African. Mwai Kibaki's career as a lecturer lasted between 1958 and 1961, after which he resigned to become the first executive officer of Kenya's independence party, the Kenya African National Union, KANU. Mwai Kibaki put his best foot forward to strengthen KANU for victory in the, in the 1961 elections. KANU garnered 19 out of 33 elected seats in the House of Representatives. Mwai Kibaki himself was elected member of parliament for Donholm in 1963 and appointed parliamentary secretary to the National Treasury. He continued to hold his position as Kanu's executive officer and gained immense respect across the board, much to the chagrin of his adversaries. Also notable is that Mwai Kibaki was a key architect together with the late Tom Boyer of the acclaimed sessional paper number 10 of 1965 titled African Socialism and its application uh, to planning in Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I want now to ask Big Moai to proceed. <laughs>